Hello and welcome to another edition of Theory Craft. I'm Ben, that's Jack, and he's accompanied by our furry little friend Boris. Get down, Shut up, you Get down swing. Shut so, up. So, yes, unfortunately, our furry little friend doesn't like us all too much, but we are slowly reining him in. Not by much, but enough. For today's episode. It's not much in the case of any proper theories or any genuine articles. It's just me and Jack spitballing in terms of what exactly Marvel will attempt when they come to do their own live adaptation of their multiverses. Because with the CW-verse, which was originally known as the Arrowverse, pretty much over and done with, they finished with the Crisis of Infinite Earths, and even though... Some shows will come back once everything is back to normality. It's a bit hit and miss with DC in terms of their concept of what the multiverse is. And I just trying to wrap my head around how Marvel could do theirs better. So without further ado, let's get ready to rant! So yeah, for those... <laughs> For those of you who may not understand what the multiverse is, essentially the idea is that there's about infinite possibilities for every single possibility of an action or whatever possible, depending on your circumstances. Obviously, there is no genuine proof, but over the decades, most sci-fi series have interpreted it in different ways. We've even got a great series called Rick and Morty that seems to play it quite decent. And there have been other shows such as Star Trek that have tried it and haven't really succeeded. And there's an even more bizarre series in the late part of the 80s, early 90s, which America had called Sliders, which was a group of random kids and their professor end up getting caught in this kid's experiment, transporting through the multiverse and get lost. Yeah. Which was an interesting show, but the way that they ended it was a bit flat. It was basically, they kept jumping and kept jumping. They go, ah, uh, yeah, this doesn't look like home. And they jump, and it was home, and that was it. Like, they literally just kept going round and round and round. It's like, fine. But the thing is, like I said earlier, Marvel is heavily leading towards the idea of delving into their multiverse with both Scarlet Witch and Vision. Yeah. You've got the possibility of a Spider-Verse with Tobey Maguire, Andrew Garfield and Tom Holland. And of course, you've got Doctor Which Strange. Which I'm really the excited for. I can't oh, wait. Yes. But, no, but, no, but just not knowing our luck, we're not going to be satisfied because when are we ever... Well, no, I mean, this is the whole point of the channel. It's like we basically nitpick every little thing because we're never happy. <laughs> but there we go. But the thing is, I think it'd be a really cool concept to have Marvel showcase their multiverse. Because also with Deadpool 3 coming around the corner, they have to try and figure out where the hell he fits in the rest of the MCU. Because they have said that Deadpool 3 is going to be part of the MCU. And he is technically already, because the very first film, the fight scene that he has with the main bad guy, Ajax, is on a helicarrier, which is part of the MCU, not the Fox universe. And obviously, like in Deadpool 2, you had the addition of Cable and everything, and like time travel and so on, you know, which I'm sure that's going to... I'm sure that's going to end up complicating things a lot more when it comes into a multiverse because mm. you're at Deadpool 2. So how was that going to go? Well, this is the thing I'm trying to nitpick my brain through because the way that DC have done their multiverse is similar to the comics where they have a variety of Earths. They have their own little theme and it's sort of... It's meant to be 52, but they have just random number well, number labels, because why the hell not? But with Marvel, with their comics, and I think with the way that they're going to go for it for their movies, is that it's not in the case of that each Earth is a different theme. It's more aligned the concept of different timelines, if that makes sense. So sort of like the, uh, sort of like the, like the multiple Earth theory, which a lot of... Uh... 
like which which is like one of my favorite theories so it's kind of uh so kind of on the same basis of maybe i suppose you could call it a butterfly effect mm -hmm. maybe there's sort of like every decision that you make there is always an opposite decision which you could have made and then that yes. splits off makes a timeline here timeline there and it just goes on and on and on which i kind of like the idea but again it's very hard to try and wrap my head around well, where the mcu is going to plop in mutants that's the biggest issue i've had with all of this yeah because we discussed we discussed that uh a while back and then also we discussed uh loki as well because yes. um obviously like the multiverse is gradually starting to pick up steam so it's got to the point where like okay we have to do something with the multiverse now so i'm looking forward to what uh, they're going to do with Loki since he's going off gallivanting with the Space Stone and so on. So I'm very much looking forward to that series when that eventually comes out. So, yeah, there's a lot of, a lot of different possibilities for the multiverse, which is a bit of a pun. <laughs> yeah, well, with the leaks that I've heard so far, whether or not it's true, I have no idea. But supposedly one of the main villains for the new phase of the MCU is going to be Kang the Conqueror, which is an amazing concept of a character because not only is he just over the top powerful, but he's actually the descendant of Reed Richards, which is, of course, Mr. Fantastic, which again leads into another question as to where does that fit in? Because now that the Marvel Cinematic Universe, MCU, whatever you want to call it, has everybody back involved to a degree, it's now trying to figure out how everyone fits in because you can't just suddenly say, oh, they've been here all along. No. If that was the case, how come they didn't like appear in Endgame? Like, that would have helped so much. Exactly, because obviously, yeah, obviously we've had, you know, the timeline which we follow throughout the whole of the MCU and everything, that's, our, that's like our established um, scene, if you like. So you can't kind of upset the established order. You have to go off from that. But like you said, with... Uh, yeah, with the end fight in end fight in Endgame. Um, when was that? Twenty twenty three was that? Yes, twenty twenty three. So yeah, I'm not sure whether you would have the mutants around about that time. But then again, going with the snap, it depends because I might have shifted things. But it's it's really difficult. My me and Ben, like anybody who's watching this into the future as well, we had a bit of a brain fart trying to figure out where we could pop in mutants into the MCU. But it's really quite difficult especially when you have to include things like the snap and so on this is this is where we kind of get a little bit uh right where do we go from here because the biggest thing is going to be the explanation of the mutants we racked our brains to try and come up with every idea imaginable to plug them in somewhere but then when you get to around the year 2023 which around that time is the death of uh, wolverine slash logan slash james howlett and multiple other names so yeah Going from here. Boris wonders if there is a multiverse. Would there be an alternate universe where I do not have to put up with Jack and his four ball of a cat? <laughs> so, yes, uh, Boris isn't a bit of a fan of Jack at the moment. He's a bit unsure, but. Why don't you shut the hell up? Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. But I, this... I'm, I'm really nice, so I promise. I'll put you in the tumble dryer, you. <laughs> but the thing is is like the multiverse as a whole within marvel is a very interesting concept because more often than not if there is a storyline that they actually really do like they continue the story on as an alternate universe there's like yeah. uh Spider-Man renew your vows, where basically he's still married to Mary Jane. He has a daughter who's become a Spider Girl, and all of that bits and bobs. You got the Marvel Zombie Universe, which again is an amazing series. But I, it is a bit of a head fuddle sort of moment to try and grasp where everybody's going to fit in. But it's also trying to understand what they interpret the multiverse to be because so far with the mcu it is basically if you to go back in time or something came from the past to the present that creates a whole new timeline which has no impact 
on the original well it has an impact at the moment it goes to but not in the past of the original it's yeah but then again then in lies another problem because it doesn't matter how you, they try to explain away the timelines and everything and how like there's all these multiple different pockets of different timelines that the characters and such go down you still have loki hopping about in these different timelines mm -hmm. which I'm looking forward to because it'd be interesting to see as to what what is is it like ultimate goal being able to have the space stone and just muck about with it or like he may be the god of mischief but like to what end like that thing is with Loki is that he's not just a crazy villain for the sake of being crazy he has a reason behind all of what he does well I don't well obviously Asgard's not really going to be a goal now and it wouldn't be a realistic goal either so it does make me think where we go from here so like asgard it turns out doesn't really have much kind of premise especially like in this marvel universe now especially because they've gone through the whole oh they are gods oh no they're not gods they're a race of alien beings and that ends up complicating things but if it's done well with loki mm. i can imagine it turn out to be really good if maybe you could merge like the series along with like all these other kind of you can have multiple crossovers to make it more fun i think it would be really cool to follow so i'm looking forward to the new ideas with loki agreed i mean the thing is with the whole thor aspect that i i like the idea in the original comics where he had a like human half called donald blake it made sense but for the mcu they screwed that up like it was a bit... The first movie was okay because it established to a degree the idea of Thor. Not by much, but it was enough to get you interested. Second movie was just shoddy as hell. Like, you don't even need to know much about it other than the fact that it plays a small part into the rest of the Infinity Saga. But again, not by much. It was anything. If anything, the scene at the very end, like the uh, scene where you got Bolstag and Lady Sif take the ether to the collector, that's the only scene that's relevant. The rest of the film doesn't really matter. Well, to be honest, like now since we're kind of going back to a little bit back to uh, the Loki series, obviously you got One Division, which is only the one season, isn't it? So far, yes, it's going to have I think six episodes long. Yeah, and it's so going to lead into you've got Loki. You got One Division, but also you've got uh, Thor: Love and Thunder. So yes, I because I, I think that now we've had the like the whole multiverse and everything. You got uh, Loki, which was kind of the kickoff for it. Now it's set a precedent, so I think it puts a little bit of added pressure on some new projects which are coming up because it's you got to interlace them somehow. I'm just wondering how this is going to work. Well, this is it because originally the series Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. was supposed to do that. It was meant to tie into the, like, gaps between the movies. And it did really well for, like, about two and a half seasons, maybe three at the most. But the problem was that after that, it decided to do its own thing and slowly but slowly but surely just distanced off to the point where it didn't even feel like it was part of the MCU anymore. And I just gave up trying to figure it out. Yeah. But... <sighs> It's going to be very confusing to a degree of how the multiverse plays into Doctor Strange because one division is meant to like lead into multiverse of madness, Doctor Strange. But then you've also got the Loki TV series, which is meant to lead up to the Thor Love and Thunder. Yeah. So <sighs> my head just can't get mo I can't get around the whole idea of to how loki's gonna randomly appear in the like the right moment to clash in with thor love and thunder i don't know why but i've got i've got kind of a little theory i don't know why but i've got i've got a sneaky skin feeling that this loki series is going to involve scrolls as uh, so, somehow i've got a feeling i don't know why <laughs> yeah i mean We've said many, many times that there is... I got a huge feeling that the scrolls are going to play a big part in the next phase. It's going to lead into Secret Wars. Mostly down to the just shoddy job that we've had with Hulk. Ever since after Ragnarok, 
This is Hulk the one. Is a scroll. End of. Yeah. <laughs> this is my theory as a personal thing. Is the fact that after Ragnarok, there must have been some either weird switch or somewhere either it was on Sakaar or whether it was like before he like, got took off from Asgard, because. Time and time again, there is no way the Hulk would have got his ass whooped by Thanos. I don't care if he had the Power Stone. No, no, The key not. factor with Hulk is the angry he gets, the stronger he gets. If he can't beat somebody, he gets angry. What happens when he gets angry? He, he gets, gets stronger. stronger. Therefore, he wouldn't have got his ass kicked, and it wouldn't have been such a big problem. That was the first thing. That when, like, when... Uh... I remember watching it back when watching where that fight scene in the like the first ten minutes of the film when Thanos beat uh, like when Thanos beat Hulk and I was like, no, this does not work. No, this does not work. I was happy with the rest of the film, but there's that one glaring issue where I was like, something's wrong. Something's yeah. wrong. And it was like when you go, oh, the Hulk was too scared to come out. No, no. <laughs> but no. the other, but the other thing I said to you was that when you got Hulk in Endgame. He seemed a lot smaller compared to the rest of the MCU. Yeah. Because, I mean, two degrees meant to be, what, between eight and ten foot tall when he's hulked out. He's meant to be quite a big guy. But because when you... another thing as well, we never actually see Hulk land on Sakaar. No, no, this is it. Like, we know that he gets he has the Queen Jet and the Queen they I think they literally just say that in the film that um, Sakaal basically has like these rifts in space which allows random bits of junk to appear but that's such a lazy bit of writing like and another thing as well is that Bruce Banner's uh, personality and Hulk's personality are very different as well and it leads into like an evil blah obviously it leads into Endgame as well it's very much different you know mm -hmm. it all kind of feeds in together but now I think that now we've got this kind of multiverse kind of saga in I think gradually in like the background there is uh, uh the, bro like, the Russo brothers have like kind of had a bit of a brain fart and gone okay because I've seen on YouTube I've been watching a few YouTube videos and a lot of people are now asking this question if Hulk is a scroll because they're realizing things doesn't fit I think we were sort of some of the first ones to well you were the first one of the first ones to kind of start this thing up when I thought when you told me the theory I was like it actually makes perfect sense yeah and now I just think if you've got Loki, you've got um, like the whole uh, multiverse and everything, different timelines and that, you can have so much fun with this timeline now. If Hulk is really a scroll, you can have fun with that because mm. now you've got like the real Bruce Banner off somewhere. So you can have fun now. But this is it. I mean, the other thing as well is that I hope to a degree that they give a little nod to the like previous Marvel movies that have happened in the past. Yeah. Not just the Fox movies, not just like the previous Hulk movies, but I mean some of the cringy ones that we saw like ages ago. Like the really low budget Iron Man that like, literally uh, yeah. looks <laughs> I mean, obviously there's only so much they could do in terms of showcasing off the past because Actors either aren't aware around anymore or they just can't find the right costumes or whatever. But there are so much possibilities to what Loki and Doctor Strange can show off. If they just literally go, oh, yeah, there is a multiverse and that's it. I would be so annoyed because there is so much potential. And I got this horrible feeling that they're going to just skim over this the whole the idea of what is the multiverse and just use it as an excuse to bring in the mutants. That's the yeah. only thing. Yeah, but like we said in our past video, you can't just plop the mutants in and go, like you said, oh, they've been here the whole time. No, that doesn't work. <laughs> I mean, the thing is as well is with WandaVision, that's, re that's the one that I think is going to be the most groundbreaking series of all because it's set in the pocket universe which is kind of like House of M, where everything's a bit flipped, where Scarlet Witch is controlling everything and basically makes it her paradise dimension and has kids with vision, which become Wiccan and Speed. Now, the thing is with those two is that although they are fragments of her imagination, they do eventually become real in the uh, main Marvel comic universe. 
Yeah, because wasn't it like these pocket dimensions like that she kind of like created like I can't remember if this was the premise of it. Correct me if I'm wrong, but wasn't it kind of like born out of like her loss of losing vision? For the TV series, I think it is, yes. For the comic version, it was just literally Scarlet Witch had a mental breakdown and that was it. Like she had had enough because basically with the way her powers are, the mutant population knew that she was a danger. So it was between Charles and Xavier Charles Xavier and Magneto were trying to find a way of getting rid of her safely so she couldn't harm anyone. She had a mental breakdown and then everything just went like that. But the thing is, is that in that pocket dimension, her kids in that one were actually parts of these demonic souls that were created by Mephisto. Now, Mephisto is a really interesting baddie because he has played quite a big part in a lot of different character stories, namely Spider-Man, because of No More Day, uh, One More Day, where he gives up his marriage to Mary Jane to save Aunt May's life, even though she's like, hey, God, <coughs> bless you. Oh. Uh, <laughs> but the other thing as well is... <sighs> with the kids of Scarlet Witch and Vision, when they do become real, they become part of a team called the Young Avengers. Yeah. Now that is another project that's in the works at the moment, the Young Avengers. There hasn't been Ooh. any... Pro yeah, there hasn't been an awful lot of confirmation as to what characters are going to turn up, but I can guarantee that we will get either... Well, for the, the most part, we're going to get Miss Marvel because she's got her own TV series coming as well. And then it's trying to figure out what other Young Avenger characters could fit in. Because, weirdly enough, in that series, there was Kid Loki when he decides to be a, become a good guy. But he's in the body of a child. Because, again, this is the one thing that they've missed when it comes to the Asgardian thing. Is yeah, that they... because I think, wasn't there leaked images of uh, Loki, like... I, uh, how do I explain this without sounding like I've had a brain fart? But there is, like, supposedly, like, from leaked images, a lot of people speculated that there is kind of like a, sort of like an alter ego, like a second, like, Loki that you can transform into, but it's a woman. Yes. I think that's meant to be either the idea that it's Lady Loki is, like, some random thing, or whether it is part of the multiverse. There's because... another thing which... Oh, yeah, carry on, yeah. Because someone pointed out on a video I was watching the other day that in the trailer for Loki that you see, like, for, like, a blip of a second, he's wearing a jumpsuit that has TWR, which is... I can't remember what the acronym is, but it is for this weird organisation that specialise in anachronisms in time. So, I'm wondering whether, because of all this mucking about, it's drawn the attention of this time group. And one of the people that they've already captured is Lady Loki. Or yeah, it's him just... But, yeah. But I just see with, like, going through time as a... How would they even be aware of him if he's jumping, like, through, like to and from different timelines? I don't really see how that... Well, the thing is, I would imagine to a degree that either it already existed or it's something that they created after the snap because with the because if you remember in endgame hulk has a discussion with the ancient one who basically says that she sees through time via the time stone but this is the mcu there can't be just more there can't be just one way of time travel because stark and oh. ant-man did it with the pin particles yeah. So, by that logic, there must be either people that have either used that technology already and looking through the timeline for anachronisms, or there's already a group of people that already have that tech and keep an eye on it. But then thinking that, if that were the case, they would have stopped the Avengers in Endgame. So I'm assuming it's got to be something after Endgame, if that makes sense. Well, 
another thing I'm kind of wondering about is obviously you've got Loki who's decided to hop off with the uh, with the Space Stone. And I was thinking of how like the rest of that timeline, like say if we just had a, that film where Loki buggers off with the Time Stone, I was like trying to think of how the film would go on after that specific point. Because I was wondering if he's going through like the, obviously the different dimensions, timelines, so on. I cannot remember the answer to this question. I swear I've asked you this before, but this is going to sound like an odd question. And but do, can the Infinity Stones exist in more than one timeline? So, in the Marvel comic universe, the idea is that only the stones from its native universe can only work in said universe, which is. Oh, but this is this is the complicated stuff. <laughs> yeah, this is it because then it, if that was the case, then you wouldn't be able to have Endgame as a movie. Exactly. But do you see my point? <laughs> yeah. But the thing is, is like if you imagine that obviously Loki escaped from that point in Avengers, that means he wouldn't have gone to Asgard. Which means that he wouldn't have been held prisoner. He wouldn't have helped Thor with the Dark Elves. Thor would have possibly died from the Dark Elves. Yes. Which would also lead into the fact that Odin would have died. Asgard would have ruptured sooner. Hela would have escaped sooner. Because Hela only escaped once Odin had died. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Like this... The... Just with the way I'm wondering, so long, suckers, but this is going to find alternate universe with plenty of vodka. You want to go there, mate? All right, I'll make sure you get there. Right, right, ready? I'll, let me just see. Where's my friggin' slingshot? Hang on, hang on, hang on. <laughs> no, he's freaking gone. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, he finds his way. To a Russian brothel. <laughs> <laughs> so, yes, yeah, so as you were saying. Yeah, with the Infinity Stones, because I was wondering, like, the the logistics, because it was just, because it was after, like, the events of, um, you know, when I speculated to you that there is the possibility with the stones that they could have saved Scarlet Witch and still kept the stones but then obviously you had the trailer for now black widow sorry uh yeah that's what i meant you know for L natasha they could have saved natasha with, and then like with the stones and so on but then the uh the black widow trailer came out and then that kind of buggered things up a little bit because then i was very confused after that so if the if the so if the stones can exist in another universe but like you said, if they have to be from a certain universe, wouldn't that make them in other timelines pretty much useless? This is I know why. it's a complicated question, I know. But... No, it's not complicated. It's just the fact that it's consistently inconsistent. Like, Marvel have said... More plot holes than Swiss cheese. Yes, yes, that one as well. I've stolen this gimmick. <laughs> yes. But the thing is, Marvel has said time and time again that the Infinity Stones only work in their native universe because there was a... Well, clearly they don't because in another timeline, we've seen that they work. So how does that... <laughs> I don't know. Because back in the 90s, when DC and Marvel were struggling like hell to get any books done, they forged their comics together briefly and... Darkseid, which is a DC villain, tried using the Infinity Gauntlet in the DC Universe, but it didn't work because it's not native to the DC Universe, therefore it doesn't make any sense. They're just shiny rocks. Yeah. But, as we've just said, the whole premise behind Endgame is that they go back in time, going back in time, and <laughs> to get the Infinity Stones piece by piece to then restore what Thanos did five years prior. Yeah, but then you've got two sets of Infinity Stones, though, if you think about it. Yeah, that's the other issue as well, because I just realised one other thing that they could have done better. Thanos said himself, 
There is no way you can destroy the Infinity Stones. The only thing he did was reduce Turn them to, to atoms. Exactly. Now, who can go to atoms? Ant-Man. Ant-Man. Ant-Man should have gone subatomic, could have found the stones, undid it all, and it would have been done deal. There wouldn't have been a big fight scene, unfortunately. Because with but, those capabilities, you can like, shrink to an atom and then go smaller from an atom. Yeah, you go subatomic. smaller than an atom, but Ant-Man technically can. Yes. But that's... The... <sighs> this is why... Ant-Man would have been perfect! Well, this, the irony is that Ant-Man is technically the reason why they were able to do anything in that entire movie. But... <laughs> excuse me. The thing is, it's like, why didn't they think of that first? Because they did even say to him that they were shrunk down to atoms. The fact that he's been shrunk down to atoms for the best part of five years, even though it's like five hours for him, proves the point. Exactly. Like... <laughs> they missed, you missed an, like, they missed an opportunity there, for sure, to explain it better. Uh, I don't know. It's... I do hope they do make use of the multiverse, though, because at the end of the day, Hulk has been a very difficult character to do right in terms of his own movies, because technically still now, he's not even lawfully the MCU. So he's only as a cameo character. He can't have his own solo movie in the MCU because no. it's owned by Universal. Yeah, yeah. Which is a shame. Because if that was the case, I would have preferred the previous guy, not Mark Ruffalo. Like, Mark Ruffalo's done a decent job. Oh, oh yeah, what was it, Ed, Ed Norton? Yes. Because his Hulk was amazing. Like, it was the Hulk. Like, it was this huge dude. And it's like, why can't we have had that? And yeah, like, <laughs> am, I, am I the only one, even if someone who watches this show, am I the only one who actually likes Eric Banner's Hulk from like 2003? Am I the only one? I think it's me and you to a degree that seems to I be... I really liked that Hulk. Yeah. I mean... The multiverse is going to be a very fiddly thing to try and figure out because oh, yeah. Doctor Strange, the first movie, was trippy enough. And it was only just slightly showcasing what the whole mystic side of the MCU was. So I just I'm trying to figure out as well as like what is the whole point of the Scarlet Vision series? Because I can guarantee by the end of it, Vision won't come back. Like it will be no. like some it will be some weird manifestation, either it's Mephisto in disguise or it's something else entirely. There's no way. Vision's going to come back fully because obviously he's died and there's no soul, there's no mind stone for him anymore. So even if he did return, he wouldn't have the same humanity, if that makes sense. Yeah, I get that. Yeah. I mean, suppose that the vision was meant to be revived for Endgame without the mind stone, which I would have loved to have seen. But it would have undone the whole death behind him as well. Although, maybe not WandaVision, but apart from any number of series or any number of movies, I said to you about this before, and a lot of people will wonder who the hell I'm talking about. If you watched Spider-Man in the 90s, you would know on Fox Kids back in the day. That's how old we are. Uh, like the, One of the perfect people for like dimensions, timelines, or any of that. A ridiculous character, but a brilliant one. Is the spot? Yes. Oh my god! Like I said spot. to you, can you imagine Spot in an Ant Man movie, pin particles, and so on? Because the spot, like, can create portals to basically go from one place to another. Like, like that I think would he could, be like, amazing. Change, like the size and shape of objects and himself as well, and he could be in multiple different places all at one time. So that would yeah. be. An, I would love that. Because the thing is, as well, is like in the '90s, like episode of Spider-Man, he's such a goofy villain because he knows he can't be touched, and it's like Spider-Man goes to punch him, but then he punches himself. <laughs> yeah, because like a hole comes out in front of him, and goes. Poof. But yeah, it's... I thought, but like you said, for an Ant-Man movie, he'd be a brilliant villain. Oh, he would be perfect. But who could you have as the spot? Well, it depends because most of the time his face is covered, so. 
But then if you get you can't do a polka dot like suit for real. You can't do that. I don't know. I mean, with the new Suicide Squad movie, we do have the polka dot man and it does look bonkers, but it looks really good. So then again, this is comic books. You have to go bonkers. If you go too real, it doesn't look real enough, if that makes sense. Yeah, if you make it too real, it sort of feels abstract. Yeah. But I think Jim Carrey would make a good spot. Yeah, I think so. Like, I love that he's been able to play like really... Like really, he can play really serious roles as well. Mm. Like he'd be, can you imagine he'd be like a very evil version of Andy Kaufman when he was playing Andy Kaufman? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's true. Um, but the thing is, is like, all we know is, as I said, is with Doctor Strange, it's going to be the multiverse of madness. So, does that mean he is going to be travelling through the multiverse itself, or is he going to be having to repair things in the multiverse due to certain people, or I, Loki, mucking with things? I don't know, because then if you... Ch it's kind of like the butterfly effect. Again, if you change things, it can have the butterfly effect and have repercussions along certain timelines and so on. So... This is going to be a cluster fudge of like a thing to figure out. I think once we got like we've seen some things, we've actually seen like parts of a series, episodes, and so on. Then once we got the start, we can kind of go off from there and like kind of yeah. see what's done better and where it can go. Yeah. But yeah, I think that's pretty much covered for this week's episode. I mean, it's not a long one. We have no idea what's going on in terms of any films or anything because of this lovely season of covid so unfortunately we are just ranting and raving as usual about absolute nonsense that we have no idea about thanks for joining us we are two dudes and a furry little guy who's buggered off to a different dimension trying to find some different booze and again give us a like subscribe and we'll see you all soon laters <laughs>